Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Annie, and for this week's video, I wanted to share some of the outfits that I wear when I go to work. Currently, I work as a researcher, so I thought that would be interesting to show you guys what I wear as a research coordinator working in a mental health clinic. But also, before this job, I did work as a therapist and social worker in various community health settings. So I kind of put together four or five of the main uniforms that I like to say that I wear to work. So I will show those to you, and I plan on finishing off the video with sharing some tips and advice on how to put together a professional yet comfortable yet not breaking the bank rotation of outfits that you can wear for work. I hope that will be helpful and kind of fun for y'all. Before we get into the video though, hi, if this is your first time on my channel, hello, my name is Yenny and I'm a mental health professional making mental health videos here on YouTube. I make videos on psychology, mental health, social work, social justice, life advice. I do get ready with me's pretty much whatever I feel like making at the end of the weekend after a long week of work. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, join my small corner of the internet, that would be awesome. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. All right, so here's the first outfit. Um, please don't mind the fridge. I live in a small apartment. This is what we have to work with. This is an outfit I would wear as a social worker working in a clinic or even as a researcher. It's versatile because as you can see, I have these black trousers which are from Uniqlo. It was a collaboration between Uniqlo and Theory. So I got it altered so it would hit right at my ankle. So it's comfortable, first of all, because it's loose and not form-fitting. But it's also professional, which I enjoy. And then it's black, which is a neutral color, goes with everything. And then I have paired it with this white striped blouse that I got years ago from like TJ Maxx or something. And then I really enjoy it because it looks really unique, it's different, but also the cut is professional. So it's sweet, yet professional, and I look put together while being comfortable. And when it comes to the shoes, I paired it with these theory shoes that I thrifted years ago. So this is what I would wear more as like a, hello, I'm your therapist, thank you for coming to see me sort of a look. Or if I were to go to meetings, this is what I would wear. And usually when I was working in clinics as social workers, I did wear these shoes a lot. But to switch this outfit up a little bit, right now I work as a researcher. In research settings, it's a lot less, in my experience, it's been a lot less professional for me where you actually don't even need to dress up this much, at least in my setting, so disclaimer there. But I like to dress up for work, mostly like this, because it makes me feel like I'm going to work, it makes me feel put together, like I'm ready for the day. So how I would switch up this outfit now in the context of a researcher, hold on, is I would probably change my shoes, that's for sure, I'm not wearing these heels. Air Force Ones that I bought last year. I actually switched out the tag here with a rose gold one that I found online. So this outfit with the sneakers immediately makes it very casual. Part of my uniform is my work lanyard right now. I guess if, I guess when I was a therapist as well, I did have a work lanyard. I'm a lanyard person. I like to have things I need around my neck. Usually I would have my work ID on this as well. And then I would wear my lab coat. Since I am running samples, I like to wear the lab coat. Also because in this capacity of work, we don't have our work badges. So it just makes me look more like I belong where I'm supposed to be. I'm not just a bystander walking around the clinic, obviously. So this is how I would turn that first outfit into my current outfit that I, I probably wore this like last week, so. And if you notice, the lab coat is also in the same color scheme of all of my clothes. That way everything matches easily. For me, it's black, white, gray, and all forms of beige and brown, and they all match, which is awesome. So this is the first slash second outfit. All right, now this is the second outfit that I put together. As you can see, it's very similar to the first one. I just changed my top. So same black trousers, same comfortable but professional heels. And this shirt I actually got from Uniqlo a few years ago. I got it in three different colors, black, white, and beige. And I like it because it's this sort of ribbed material, which is very good quality. I've had it for a while, worn it many times. And the way that it's cut on the arm and on the neck makes it look a lot more classic and like put together rather than a regular t-shirt but how it feels on your body just feels like a shirt it's very comfortable for me comfortability is key 
If I'm not comfortable while I sit in an office for eight hours, I will be miserable. So I need to be comfortable, but also look put together. So this is another outfit I would wear to work as a therapist. And then you get the gist. If I were to change this up to my current researcher role, once again, I would wear it with my Air Forces and then throw on my lanyard and my lab coat, which as you can see, again, matches everything, which is awesome. This is the best fashion tip I've ever gotten in my life. Just buy everything in a color palette and it all just matches. You don't have to think about it. It's awesome. So yeah, that is the second quick outfit. Just a shirt, which I highly recommend from Uniqlo. I'll try to link down what I can if they still have things in stock in the description box down below so you guys can get your hands on it. That is an A plus for me. Alrighty, so here is the third outfit. Lo and behold, it's beige. What, I mean, at this point, I think you guys should understand the theme here. I put on these beige trousers that I got from Zara many years ago. Same theory shoes. I don't have that many pairs of shoes. I think I have like around 10 or less than 10. I used to have like 40, 50 plus shoes and I only wore like 10 of them. So why do I have them? So I've sold or donated or thrown out a lot of those shoes. So these are my go-to looking nice and professional at work shoes, which works for me. Like I said, trousers are from Zara. I really like this because it's not too tight like the other ones, but the cut, I actually didn't even need to get it altered. It's perfectly cut on the ankle like I want. And then this turtleneck is from Uniqlo. And turtlenecks are just such a classic, a staple piece in anyone's wardrobe. I, I remember watching people say that in their videos and now I'm saying that in my, but I get it, it's true. So turtlenecks, obviously you can wear in any environment, but especially also in the workplace, it makes you look very put together. I'm here to work, don't mess with me. I know what I'm doing, which is the type of personality, I don't know, type of energy that I wanna give off at work. So top is from Uniqlo. A lot of my clothes are Uniqlo. Uniqlo has really good basics that actually last a pretty long time, which I enjoy. Um, I'm in the process of trying to swap out the basics that I have with more sustainable brands, but that doesn't mean like I want to just throw this out. It works perfectly fine. That would be wasteful in itself. So turtleneck, beige trousers. Oh, another thing to mention here, I think, is I really am happy with the way my wardrobe is right now as well, because as you can tell from like the previous outfits or this one, after work, I don't really need to change to go to a nice dinner. I don't need to change to go to like a casual dinner. I think these like staple outfits like a trouser, a nice like ribbed shirt or a turtleneck works great because they're so versatile. You could go to a nice dinner and no one will tell you why are you dressed like that. It's just classic pieces that never go out of style. This outfit could be straight from the 90s, who knows. And that is what I aspired to do when I started dwindling down my closet and I'm really, really happy to be at this point. All right, last but not least. As you can see, this outfit is a lot more, sorry, I'm getting my shoes on to give you the full effect. So as you can see, this outfit is a lot more casual. I worked in lots of different environments. Um, in different types of environments, this outfit would work. So when I worked in a more community health setting, then I would dress down a bit more because a lot of my clients um, like you're not there to do a fashion show, right? Like you're there to do your job. I'm not there to flex on my homeless clients that I have so many different clothes to wear when they have nothing. So I would usually tone down my outfits like this when I would work in those settings where, first of all, you have to check with your supervisor if it's okay for you to wear jeans. Most settings are all right with you wearing black jeans most of the times. Blue denim jeans, you'll have to talk about them, but at least from my experience, black jeans were always fine as long as there were no tears or rips on them. So just a good pair of classic black jeans was a go for me. I also have a rotation of work sweaters like this. This one's from Zara, I got a few years ago. It's gray, so it goes with the rest of my closet. It's good quality, so it stays in my closet despite how many times I wear it. And I like to kind of tuck in my sweaters a little bit in the front to kind of, I don't know, it makes me feel a bit more put together. And I paired it with these shoes, because shoes can really make an outfit look a lot more elevated, I think. But to be honest, most of the times in environments where I would wear outfits like this, 
I was mostly wearing my Air Forces, so. And last but not least, before we jump into the tips and advice section, accessories. I don't know if you were curious about this, but I was interested in this when I started working. So when it comes to accessories, like I said, we're not there to flex on our clients. We're there to do our work. And I think how you present yourself is also really, really important in these environments where you're working with many vulnerable people. So when it comes to accessories, I have like a set rotation of two to three accessories that I just always wear to work. So one is a watch. Makes me feel professional, put together. And it's also good for when I'm doing therapy sessions. That way I usually wear my watch like this with the, fa with the face facing me that way when I sit you know pretend I'm sitting it's kind of awkward I can lay my arm out like this I'm listening we're having a productive session and when the clients are looking away I can glance at my watch real quick just to make sure we're not going over time just to make sure I don't have another client waiting for me in the waiting room but it's helped me a lot to just have my own watch when it comes to time management at work so I wear a watch I wear like a simple pair of hoop earrings just part of my self-expression, but also makes me feel put together to have earrings on. I don't switch out my earrings every day. I don't wear like crazy glamorous ones. That's a personal choice. Not all therapists need to or have to do this. So I wear hoop earrings. I wear my cross. That is really important to me. I've gotten a lot of questions about my cross. So at the end of the day, this is a whole nother video when it comes to your self-expression versus being like a blank slate for your clients. We'll get into that later, but I do wear it because it's important to me. And I also wear my engagement ring and wedding ring. And once again, same thing, self-expression. Depending on which environment that you work in, it'll be important to wear it or not wear it. I know that in psychiatric wards or inpatient units, most people are advised to not wear any kind of jewelry just for their own safety, which makes sense to me. So clearly depending on which environment you work in, that will determine what clothes you wear, what accessories you wear. All right, now let's jump into my tips and advice for how to create like a work wardrobe. I'm not a fashion person really. I'm just an everyday average career woman and having a nine to five job. So take what I say with a grain of salt. This is what's worked for me. So the first advice that I would give is understand the environment where you work. So either you already work in an environment or you are planning on getting into the field and working in some sort of environment. You working as a mental health professional in a hospital, let's say, will look very different from you working kind of in a more community setting and clinic. Also, the type of people that you work with, the populations that you will work with also can be different. You could work with the older population, older adult population. You could be working with children. You could be working with adults. You could be on your feet all day, working out on the field, doing field visits, working with people who are in homeless encampments. So as a social worker and or mental health clinician, our environments can be very, very different. So make sure to understand where you'll be working in what setting, with whom, in what capacity. So let's say you are a field social worker, you're doing field visits, visiting people's homes, homeless encampments all day. You're probably not gonna wanna go to work in heels. That's for sure. You probably want some comfortable professional shoes, but if you work in an office all day or if you're mostly doing office visits, maybe you could have some nice work heels. It can change into slippers or sneakers when you're in the office. And then when you see clients or have meetings or whatnot, you can slip into those work heels. The second tip I could give is something that I remember hearing from some sort of like minimalism channel. I watched so many of those videos the past few years, but something that really stuck with me when it came to like curating your wardrobe in a more minimalist mindset which is what I'm going for is don't have a set of clothes that only serve one specific purpose so I really appreciated that because I remember when I started working as like a professional adult I thought I had to have like a whole set of new clothes like oh I need adult clothes now but then I realized when I'm not working then those clothes are just kind of hanging in the closet over the years I've come to kind of curate my style and my wardrobe so that I have items that can work for all different occasions like a blouse like this can work for a cool YouTube video because it looks nice put together professional but I've also worn this to work many times I've also worn this for nice dinners I've worn this to interviews I've worn this for yeah like brunches on the weekend it's a nice blouse that is appropriate and stylish and cute for any kind of environment so I really like that advice and it's really helped me to curate my wardrobe in a more mindful and a more ethical way especially when it comes to how like you know sustainable fashion and consumption of clothes more and more and more clothes so and the third tip I could give is understand your style so that might be kind of difficult depending on where you are in your style journey if you're even on one so just to break it down simply 
understand what you want to wear, what you don't want to wear, what you think looks good on you, and what you feel like makes you uncomfortable when you wear it. So for example, I know in the work environment, a typical work piece of clothing could be maybe say a pencil skirt, right? Lots of women wear pencil skirts when they're in a professional environment. However, I realized early on that I don't feel comfortable wearing skirts at work. It's just I like wearing trousers, I like wearing pants, I like wearing suits with pants and trousers, not really skirts. So with that in mind, I knew that I did not need to buy any pencil skirts because I probably won't wear them and I probably won't feel good and empowered and confident wearing them anyway. So I bought myself some trousers that, like I said, have multi-purpose and make me feel good and confident and I think looks really good on my body. So there's that. So that's my video on what does a therapist wear to work, what does a social worker wear to work, my professional work wardrobe video. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video by giving me a thumbs up and also letting me know in the comments. I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves emotionally, physically, mentally, in all of those important ways, and I'll see you all in the very next video. Bye!